I will be summarizing the approach to the high-risk and very high-risk patients in the new dyslipidemia guidelines. The risk categories are similar to the previous guidelines. For very high risk, we have patients with documented atherosclerotic vascular disease, those with severe chronic kidney disease, a calculated score risk of more than 10%. There has been a slight change, uh, diabetes with target organ damage, and in addition, more than three major risk factors or early onset type 1 diabetes of duration more than 20 years is now considered very high risk. Also, familial hypercholesterolemia with atherosclerosis or with another major risk factor is also very high risk. As for high risk, it's quite similar to the previous guidelines. Patients with markedly elevated risk factor or familial hypercholesterolemia uh, without other major risk factor, moderate chronic kidney disease, and a calculated score of 5 to 10 percent is high risk. In addition, patients with diabetes without target organ damage, with diabetes duration of more than 10 years or additional risk factor, is high risk. And in moderate risk, we have young patients with diabetes duration less than 10 years without other risk factors and a calculated score of 1 to 5 percent. The remaining are considered low risk. The recommendations for treatment goals for LDL cholesterol has changed significantly in the new dyslipidemia guideline. For patients with very high risk, an LDL cholesterol reduction of at least 50 percent from baseline and an LDL goal less than 1.4 millimole or 55 milligrams per deciliter is recommended. This is a class one recommendation. Also, for patients with atherosclerosis who experience a second vascular event within two years, an LDL cholesterol goal is optionally less than one millimole, which is 40 milligrams per deciliter, and this is a class 2b optional recommendation. For patients with high risk, an LDL reduction of at least 50% from baseline and a goal of less than 1.8 millimole per liter or 70 milligrams per deciliter is recommended. So as you can see here, as the patient's risk goes up, we need to go down to lower LDL cholesterol levels and you see the treatment goals for LDL across categories of total cardiovascular risk. The intervention strategies are decided as a function of total risk and LDL cholesterol levels. And as you can see here in this slide, this uh, table is slightly changed from the previous one because even if the patient's risk is not too high, if the LDL is above 4.9 millimole per liter or 190 milligrams per deciliter, then a concomitant drug together with lifestyle is recommended. As for a, a drug treatment, it is recommended to prescribe a high intensity statin up to the highest tolerated dose to reach the goal. And if the goals are not achieved with a maximum tolerated dose of statin, combination with azetimibe is recommended. These are class 1 recommendations. For secondary prevention patients at very high risk, not at their goal, both with statin and azetimibe, combination with a PCSK9 inhibitor is recommended. This goes for very high risk FH patients as well. So uh, expected clinical benefit of LDL lowering therapies is summarized in this table. With a moderate to high dose statin, you can get a 30 to 50 percent reduction. If you add azetimibe, it will be approximately 65 percent reduction, and an additional PCSK9 inhibitor can get you an 85 percent reduction of LDL cholesterol. There are also recommendations for therapy in very high risk patients with acute coronary syndromes. In all acute coronary syndrome patients, without any contraindication 
or definite history of intolerance, it's recommended to initiate or continue high-dose statin as early as possible, regardless of the initial LDL cholesterol levels. This is a class 1 indication. Lipid levels should be re-evaluated four to six weeks after the ACAs to see whether we're at goal, and if not, then uh, azetimibe may be added to treatment. And after four to six weeks of double treatment, if the goal patient is not at goal, then a PCSK9 inhibitor may be added. Also, for patients undergoing percutaneous coronary intervention, there is a class 2A recommendation of routine pretreatment or loading with high dose statin. It, can, it should be considered as a class 2A recommendation.